Hello, this is John from CaveOfProgramming.com and this is a tutorial on packages in Java. So packages perform two functions. One is that they enable you to organize your code in a sensible fashion that enables you to find the files that you need quickly. And the other is that they um, stop you having conflicts between class names. So um, if you um, have two classes called, for example, fish, then as long as they are in different packages, then that's okay. But you can't have two classes with the same name in the same package because that would be a conflict. So let's take a look at an example here. I'm going to create an, I've got Eclipse running and I've got my main method here as usual. And I'm going to go to file new uh, class and I'm going to create a class called fish. And up here, you see, I can specify a package. Now, package names um, by convention are usually all lowercase and they can't have any spaces or um, they can't have spaces in them. And you don't usually put underscores in them or anything like that. Um, usually a, a package name is something um, very simple. So let's call this ocean. So I'm going to put the fish class in the ocean package and I click finish. And in app now, let's say I want to use the fish class. Oh, actually, before I do that, I need to tell you that um, you'll see that fish now has a statement at the beginning saying package ocean that says it's in the ocean package. And if you have a package statement um, in your file, your class file, it should be the first um, statement in the file. So it's got to come first before your other statements. And if you look at your disk, so let's right click the um, project folder, go to properties, go to the resource um, section here. Here's my um, the actual folder that my um, my project is physically in on the disk. So if I right click that and just copy it, cancel that. And if I let's go to that on in Explorer, uh, I'm already there. I think actually here we go. Um, so um, the convention in Java and Eclipse creates this automatically for you. Is that usually you have a source SRC folder that contains your Java files and a bin folder that contains your generated class files. And if I go into the source folder now, you can see that um, app.java, which contains my main method, um, that's in the default package and it's in kind of the root of the source folder. But I put fish in the ocean package and anything in the ocean package is going to be in this ocean folder subfolder. So there's my fish.java. And that structure is also reflected in the output folder, the bin folder. Here's the generated app.class file. And there's the ocean folder with fish.class in it. So um, now let's actually use the fish class. I'll say fish fish equals new fish. And um, I'll get an error initially. But what I have to do is, um, after any package statements that might be here, and um, excuse me. So actually, in this in this case here, um, because app is in the default package, um, I haven't got a package statement. But if there was one, um, I have to type other statements after that. And um, in order to use things from the ocean package, I need to type import uh, ocean. And I'm going to say ocean dot fish because I want to use the fish class from the ocean package. And now my error is gone and we're fine. Let's create another um, class in this package. So I'll right click the package folder here and I'll go to new class. And you see that the package is now filled in for me because I right click the package. And let's create here. Um, something like, I don't know, seaweed. So seaweed. And if I now want to use the seaweed class, uh, so I want to say something like seaweed weed equals new seaweed. I'll just do control uh, space there. And in fact, if I do this, Eclipse, I think, will add the import statement for me. There we go. Um, so you see Eclipse has added um, another import statement, or I could have just typed that by hand. Now, an alternative that you should know about to having a different import statement for each class is you can type, you can import everything from one package, 
by just saying import, uh, in this case, ocean.star. And star in, um, is a wildcard that means import any class from that package. Um, so now I can use both of these classes. Uh, but the great thing about using modern IDEs like Eclipse is that you actually never have to worry about typing. Ah, sorry, that was my doorbell going there. I was going to say you never have to worry about typing import statements yourself um, because you can use a shortcut and your IDE will handle it for you. So um, if you right click and go to source, um, and go to Organize Imports um, and you can see the shortcut for that is Control Shift and O. Um, Eclipse will automatically add any import statements that you need and it will remove any that you don't need. So if I select that you can see it's added um, all the imports that I need here. Um, as long as it can find the class files somewhere like either they've got to be defined in your project or they've got to be defined in a jar file that you've included into your project, then it will deal with adding the actual import statements automatically. So if I remove that again, and I could do Control, Shift and O. So you need Control and Shift at the same time, and then press O. Then again, it's um, that's organized my imports for me and added the ones that I need. Now, um, packages are hierarchical in Java. Uh, so you can have packages within packages um, and if that sounds mysterious uh, you only have to think that well you have folders within folders on your disk um, and it's pretty straightforward and the packages just map to those folders. The difference is that um, whereas uh, with folders if you specify a folder name you, you usually use slashes to separate the different subfolders with packages you use dots. So let's see how that will work. Supposing I've got an ocean package and I want to create a sub package within that called um, plants, let's say. So um, I'm going to go to file new and um, new class and let's have a plant like, um, uh, I don't really know, let's say um, algae, which uh, algae or however you pronounce it. I guess is a type of plant or is it an animal? I'm not really sure. Um, anyway, that'll do. Uh, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to type here, I'm going to say that I want this to be in the ocean package and then I want it to be in a sub package of ocean called plants. I think I'll give you creatures actually. Uh, but yeah, not important. I'll leave that. Okay. Um, so if I click finish now, um, you see that I've got this package here, ocean.plants with this class algae in it and if I look on my disk then um, in if I if I go to let, let's say the um, source folder and I go to ocean um, and there's so I'm now in my ocean folder corresponding to my ocean package and that's now got a subfolder in it called plants which has my algae in it um, and I could like take my seaweed in Eclipse if I want and drag it into the ocean package like this. So click OK. And now seaweed is in the sub package plants of ocean. And if I look at seaweed, um, now at the top it says package ocean.plants. So Eclipse has updated that for me. And in my app here, if I want to use seaweed, I have to say import ocean.plants.seaweed. So this is saying um, import the seaweed class from the plants package and plants is a sub package of ocean and uh, you separate the different sub packages by dots so that's um, that's I guess more or less the really all is to packages it's it's not that complex although it seems a little bit baffling when you first see it um, and there's there's just one thing that I think I should mention which is that if you want to um, distribute your code so that other people can use it, um, which would usually be in a jar file, then um, you want to make sure that your package name that you put your stuff in um, is unique in the whole world so that um, people can use your packages. And it doesn't matter even if someone, someone that uses your code might already have a package called Ocean themselves. Um, and then 
if you have a, a package called Ocean, um, it could conflict with their package, or at least um, they might have a class called Fish in a package called Ocean. And if you give them a jar file that also has a package called Ocean with a class called Fish in it, then they can't use it because there's a conflict there. And for that reason, um, there's a convention in Java for creating worldwide unique package names. And the way it works is, um, let's say I wanted to distribute a class called, um, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say I've, I've created some game and my game's called Aquarium. So I'll give this class a name called Aquarium. And I want other people to be able to use this code. Um, what, I, what you do is you reverse the, um, you could use the, like the name of your company or your own name or something like that. But there's a convention that if you've got a website, you reverse the name of your website. So um, my website is caveofprogramming.com. So I've put this in a package called com dot cave of programming, um, and then I'd probably give this um, a specific package just for this particular project. So this could be called um, I don't know, like um, ocean. Uh, sorry, it's got to be lowercase ocean game or something like that. And then um, so now um, my if I look on a disk. So my aquarium here is in this package com.caveofprogramming.oceangame um, and my website is caveofprogramming.com and this particular project is called Ocean Game, at least as far as the package goes. And if I look on the disk, of course I'm going to see um, a com folder in the source folder um, with a cave of programming subfolder with an Ocean Game subfolder in it and there I'm going to put more sub packages for my game just as I need them for organizational purposes. And, um, wow, it's really noisy here, there's dog barking now. And uh, also, that's going to be the same in your, you can have a bin folder that has the same subfolders. And if you put those into a jar for distribution, your jar file will maintain that package hierarchy within it. So if you look at um, if you look at code in Java or you look at um, a source like the contents of a jar file, you'll often be perplexed because you see stuff like com and org and you kind of think what what's com and org what do they mean? But it's really very simple. It's just a reversed website name and that's all it is. So it's basically just a folder um, and that's all there is to it. Uh, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, we got through it in spite of doorbells and dogs barking. And in the next tutorial, um, I'm going to show you the basics of using generics in Java, which uh, there's something that you don't need to use for your own classes very often, but you often need them to use existing classes. So um, we'll look at that in the next tutorial. And you can find the source code for this tutorial on caveofprogramming.com. So until next time, happy coding.